Well, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I've been playing a live stream of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But there is some issues that I'm coming into with this during the live streams and during everything. I'm absolutely enjoying the game, don't get me wrong, but there's some issues I think that we gotta look at seriously. Well, before we get into this, do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things that YouTube likes. Now, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has brought along a bunch of memes for my live streams and they're absolutely hilarious when they pop up. But on top of that, we've got an article here to go over. This is from Metro. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is not a good video game. This was written back on December 30th, 2023. Now, first thing I'm gonna say is I'm thoroughly enjoying the game. I'm having a ton of fun, but I do have my reserves for it. I, I honestly understand why this game is not a game of the year. Um, there's a lot of details that I've seen with this game. They've done tons and drastic details with this game. The storyline is a copy and paste mess and it's the lore, the storyline for the game pisses me off right now because I've done four of the sages. I'm currently going through the fifth sage and it's been the same written script for the four sages. And that is to me, very lazy story writing for a game that's so massive and fully detailed. The problem with gamers is that saying that you don't like a particular game will immediately have everyone accusing you of being a fanboy and bias. Wow, does this seem familiar? Does this seem to be something that I've been seeing for a few weeks now? If you don't like Starfield, you hate Xbox. You have a vendetta against Microsoft. If you don't like Spider-Man 2, you're just lying and you're an Xbox troll. If you don't like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, then you're an immature edgelord. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is an amazing game. I'm not an edgelord, I don't think. I certainly don't hate Nintendo as I have a Switch and I enjoy the majority of their games. However, I do not like Tears of the Kingdom and I'm convinced it's not even a good game. And I, I've seen this resonated through forums and some stuff as I search out more details for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think this game has a very longevity to it. Um, people are going to be playing it for a very long time because there are so many little hidden secrets in the game and that's kind of where you enjoyed it. To me, it's like Skyrim. It's very similar to Skyrim, a much more polished Skyrim. And I kind of do want to tinker with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom because I think if you have this in an emulation where you can do mods, you can do so much more with this game. And I think Nintendo needs to step it up here and look at probably releasing it uh, on Steam so it can have a true modding community. I think really embracing that would bring in a lot more people into the fold and into the game. Obviously it's not a badly made game. It's probably one of the best made ever in terms of features and complete lack of bugs but i think nintendo was so obsessed with everything they couldn't and they could jam into the game that they lost sight of the bigger picture and the idea that it should be fun and accessible it's very accessible it's very fun there's uniqueness to it put aside the joy con how small the joy con is go out and actually get a real controller for this one um, because the Joy-Cons don't do anything justice for a lot of the games that I've seen. I think straight off the idea of reusing the same map was a mistake. Now, I have not played Breath of the Wild and I do kind of want to go play Breath of the Wild, but at the same time, I don't, because of how long Tears of the Kingdom is, I don't think I'd ever have time in my day. I don't think I'd be able to sit there and actually play it like we've been able to do this. The physics of the game engine is, is great. I mean, it's obviously astounding how well it works in the game, except you never really have to use it. There are times when you absolutely do, but in those cases, what you have to build is made very clear. You could go through the whole game and barely use Ultra Hand, yet a more focused game would have made it the main mechanic. Ultra Hand is the main mechanic. You have to use it in a lot of cases. I find new uses for it every time I play the game. Or you take the Sky Islands and Depths. The Depths are absolutely gigantic. I've maybe explored 10% of it, if that and I feel like I haven't even touched the game. Again, it's barely part of the game. You have to go into each of the couple areas uh, a couple of times by playing the story, but that's it. Otherwise, it's just 
whether you can be bothered to explore or not i you can just ignore all of it and frankly you will have missed nothing especially in the very boring empty depths but much like skyrim where there was the the dragon warriors or the dragon the dragon priestess or what, whatever it was where the creatures that you got the masks from that was a whole quest line of its own there is multiple quest lines but you can finish all the quests and if you start following certain quests there's a lot more things that you can actually do in this game if you play skyrim you can probably beat skyrim i'm thinking in about 20 hours like the main the main storyline of skyrim is not very long but there's been all these add-ons and all these mods to it and everything else that has created this whole new expansion to the game and there's so much more you can do in it and i feel that's where zelda tears of the kingdom action is there's so many more things you can do in this game and if you only focus on and try and focus on the main quest you you miss everything i am constantly doing a side quest or doing that trying to progress the story but you squirrel you squirrel in this game so bad you completely go off your nuts trying to find the next shiny thing in there and it's absolutely fantastic in that point and why i believe tears of the kingdom is a very good game did, did it belong as a game of the year candidate probably did suggesting it maybe win a game of the year no uh i don't think uh, after playing quite a bit of this game i have to say it's not a game of the year it it, it it it's a contender yes but i don't think it could be a game of the year mostly because of what i said earlier how the storyline was cookie cutter it, it became this copy and paste script for the storyline each sage you go through is the exact same written storyline with one or two small details changed up because it's a different character they've scripted these these glorious these glorious uh, CGI and videos to go through this script, but then they miss out on the script and they copy and paste the script. Why in the world would you copy and paste the script? That is my number one thing here that I say, throw it out the window, write something more, or do something more with that. And because of that, I would say, no, this game is not a game of the year contender because they failed at a very basic level to do something different ah this goes on talking about how like ubisoft games are very bloated and what they do and a bunch of things um there's something to do everywhere uh but none of it has any substance that's and that's been one of my things you can go hunting for certain things in it then you go get all the food you go through the quest you, then you have an easy solution and you go through it um it's a very tough game in that sense it's a very fun game I would necessarily say Hogwarts Legacy is probably better than Tears of the Kingdom through and through because there's the the Hogwarts you always had an idea that you you were able to progress the story and you were able to reach the end goal of the story after so many hours and you could always do it and it didn't feel like you were always squirreling in Hogwarts Legacy because you were able to do a lot of things. Hogwarts Legacy is very massive in that sense. Very, very big game. And you could squirrel quite easily in it and go do all these side quests. But it never at one point felt it was necessary. And in the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it feels like if you're not doing the side quests, you're missing out on the integral part of the story and missing out on the actual game, right? Where Hogwarts, like I'm using these two interjectable because Hogwarts, if you did the main quest, you never felt like you were missing out on the side quest because the side quests always felt like they were carried along for the ride. Where in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, if you don't do the side quest, if you do the side quest, you're now missing out on the main quest, right? And if you only focus on the main quest, you miss out on the side quest. They're never kind of brought along for the ride. They're never there. This is something that they did in World of Warcraft a very long time ago. And this is why Hogwarts Legacy does do a lot better work in that sense. When you play World of Warcraft and you're leveling, this is much before the days where you can just pay for your your uh, your character to be level 80. Like, much before the days, back in old school World of Warcraft. When you would pick up a quest, you could run around in, in that same area and pick up 10 quests in that same area. Do all those quests at once, come back, turn them in, get all your experience, and then move on to the next area. And that's kind of what I feel with Hogwarts Legacy. They don't do it as well not nearly as well as World of Warcraft ever did. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, 
the quest the, there there's no real quest system in it other than you have an adventure log that you log into you look at it every once in a while there's a lot of very long dialogue things you're constantly hitting the button and then if you hit the button one too many times you go through all the dialogue again and that that's something that's always been in a legend of zelda game but these these some of these logs are very long and they take like 10 20 30 seconds to get through the entire conversation and now you're just you really end up just skimming a lot of it so you end up missing a lot of it where Hogwarts Legacy, at least they had voice acting, everything that you did in it was a, a talk back and forth. You felt like you were involved and you were you were very into the game. Tears of the Kingdom, you're Link. You're running around as Link. You know what your quest is and that's to save the princess. You never truly know where to really go go half the time and i'm glad i am streaming the game because i would be very lost and i don't think i'd be nearly as far in the game as we are uh with zelda and it feels like there's no there's never really a guiding hand over top of you in zelda tears of the kingdom trying to push you pr push you forward in the game this article goes on to point out that you know you do some of these quests or you, these puzzles just to get a chest and then you open the chest and you get five arrows like the the rewards feel lackluster for what you get for it and in the ruby system that they have in this you go around to the towns you buy all these arrows you end up going through them fairly quick but then you're you you spend like your entire cash flow to get these arrows and you never really i never really feel like i'm getting it and there's a ton of people out there that have a duplication glitch that you can do for the game. And I'm I'm trying not to do that duplication glitch, but I can understand why it's getting so much uh, recognition for being in the game because it would make things a drastic level much easier at that point. You can buy your gear that you need, you can buy the arrows, you can buy all the food you want and do all these extra things with it. Uh, you know, they also talk about how and, the, the map got transferred over, but they added more to the map. It's, it's like an endless game that's going to go for a long time. This is a really tough spot. Like, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it's a great game. Much, very much worth the money that you, you pay for the game. In no way would I say it's a game of the year because the scripting of the game, the voice acting is great, the script of the game, the cookie cutterness of the dungeons is horrible. It, the, it's, it doesn't add this uniqueness to the game. Where with Zelda games in the past, you would need things like the hook shot, and you'd need to unlock this item to be able to go do that thing. You got all the items almost at the very beginning of the game that you needed to be able to play the game. Like the Ultra Hand you got right off the bat, Ascend you got right off the bat, like and the Time thing you got right off the bat. There, your three main things that you're doing and it's because it's an open world. It's not this linear sort of Zelda game where you've got to go to this dungeon, then this dungeon, then this dungeon, where it's more of that Metroidvania feel, where you've got to get the next item to be able to run back across the map and open up the next dungeon. It never did feel like that to me. It's more Nintendo gave us Tears of the Kingdom and said, this is our game, play it the way you want and enjoy and have fun with it. We don't care if you finish it. We don't care what you do in the game, but go off and have an adventure. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. Hopefully I can see you guys out on a live stream as I continue going through this game and exploring uh, a very, very big game. Until then, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again very soon.